Hey, podcast friends. This is Dr. Steve Hewlett with the podcast, Simple Healthy Choices for Weight Loss, where every week we help people who have realized that as their health has been declining over the years, the number of medications they are being prescribed is increasing. We want to help you reverse this health path so you can live the vibrant, pain-free, and hopefully medication-free life you deserve to live. If you'd like even more information on this topic, you can go to Amazon or Audible and pick up my book, Your Plate is Your Fate. And if you think my book helps you on your new health path, please tell your friends and leave a review where you purchased it. Hello, and welcome back to another podcast of Simple Healthy Choices for Weight Loss. And in this episode, I want to explain something that I've been saying through a lot of these podcasts, and I just really want to make sure that you understand what this is. And what this is, is I have been saying that when your insulin levels are high, this causes you to store fat. That it, it actually makes you store fat and you cannot burn it. If your insulin levels are low, this makes you burn your fat out of your subcutaneous fat tissue. So the whole key, if you're wanting to lose fat, if you're wanting to lose that, you have to keep your insulin levels low. Okay, so that's what this whole podcast is about. And I will explain to you exactly what I'm talking about so you will understand exactly why. So every time you eat something, I really want you to be thinking, is this stimulating my insulin release or is it not? Is it keeping my insulin levels low? Because that's the whole key to either storing fat or burning fat. And then we'll talk about the differences of the carbohydrates and the fat. So first, before I get started, I just want to just reiterate that when you eat food, okay, our body needs nutrients to be able to do all the magnificent things that our body does, all the, how it can heal, grow, thrive, survive. I mean, it takes care of all the inflammation. If you put chemicals and all this horrible stuff in our bodies, then our body has a way of fighting this. But the only way it can do it is if you give it the nutrients that it actually needs. And this is the best way when you keep your body healthy, you'll be able to fight all these things. Even like I've already said, even during the whole COVID thing, the people who were actually dying were the ones that were extremely obese. And again, we've talked about that because of all the inflammation that is in our bodies, all the inflammation, inflammatory mediators that are actually secreted from our fat cells. So the more fat cells you have, the more inflammation you have in your body. Plus the types of food that you eat that also cause inflammation in your body. And this is also types of food that actually makes you store it as fat. So now you have inflammation coming through your body in different ways. So today I want to talk about what our nutrition is. And basically our nutrition gets broken up into micronutrients and macronutrients micronutrients are things like vitamins and minerals and it's called micronutrients because it takes just tiny tiny amounts to be able to do all the effects that we need and they're usually measured in micrograms or milligrams to where a macronutrient is measured in grams and the micronutrients are extremely important all our vitamins all our minerals we have so many chemical processes going in our bodies going through our bodies constantly because our bodies are constantly tearing up cells, rejuvenating new cells, fixing damaged tissue, fixing little holes in our blood vessels and everything. Our bodies are constantly trying to make us better. And all it asks for us is that we give it the nutrients it needs to do what it needs to do. And so I won't go into the micronutrients. We won't talk about the vitamins and minerals, although there's some great books out there and I may do a podcast in the future. But today we're going to be talking about the macronutrients. And like I said, these are the ones that are measured in grams. So we're talking about protein, fat, and carbohydrates. And again, what I'm going to be kind of emphasizing on is the insulin production. Which ones of these stimulate insulin? Which ones don't? And why does that matter? So as far as our macronutrients, the first one I want to talk about is protein. Just real quick. Remember protein. Anytime we eat a macronutrient, anytime we eat protein, fat, or carbohydrates, As it goes through the digestion process in our mouths, in our stomachs, and in our intestines with all our microbiome and all the bacteria in our gut that help us, you know, to go through and digest this food, what our bodies do is, or what our body does is it breaks each one of these macronutrients down to its very, very, very basic building block. So with proteins, 
when it goes through digestion, it breaks it down to its very, very basic building block, which is amino acids. And amino acids are so important. There are only about 20 amino, or there are only 20 amino acids. And remember, these are the little building blocks of proteins. But these amino acids can be put together in so many different ways. We have 20,000 different proteins in our bodies. So we're, we use protein for everything. And of these proteins, some of these proteins are up to 27,000 amino acids long. So protein is so important. We have to be constantly eating protein and it needs to be a healthy protein. So if you're eating a good animal meat, a good red meat with animal protein, that protein is the exact same protein that we need. It has the same amount of amino acids that we need. So we have to eat red meat for us to get a lot of this. And that's how we get our healthy fat. And I'll talk about that in the fat also. But the main thing with this, with the proteins is of those 20 amino acids or the 20 different yeah amino acids we have there are nine of those are essential amino acids and an essential amino acid means that your body does not make these you have to get them from the food that you eat so it's very important that you're eating good healthy animal protein animal meat steaks hamburger eggs you know all that real butter all these are going to have real good, healthy protein in it. But protein does not stimulate insulin. It only stimulates insulin release very, very tiny. And I'll explain why I think God made us that way. So when you have proteins, it doesn't cause very much insulin release at all, just minimal. And there's 90 min essential amino acids that we need to eat, take in from the outside. And our body doesn't have any storage forms of protein, really. It's really our muscles are where we have a lot of our protein stored. It's not really storage. However, if you are starva if you are in starvation, like some of these third world countries, our body will, if you're not giving it any protein, it will start breaking down your muscle and it'll start using your muscle for protein to get the amino acids. But that is not a problem in most of these other countries. We're getting enough protein. I just need to make sure to get the right quality of protein. And so we don't have the muscle break down in the atrophy, like you'll see in patients who are laid in the hospitals for long periods of time. Now, the second macronutrients are fat. And remember, just like with the proteins, fat, when you eat it, it gets broken down to the basic building block of fatty acids. And this is very important because there are two essential fatty acids. And again, this means that your body does not make them. You have to get them from the outside. And those two essential fatty acids are omega-3s and omega-6s. And I'll talk about the difference between those in just a little bit. But basically, the omega-6s, when you eat fat that has omega-6s in it, this, these get turned into inflammatory prostaglandins. When you eat things with omega-3s in it, omega-3 gets turned into anti-inflammatory prostaglandins. So it's very important that you really want to keep kind of a close to one to one, maybe a three to one of omega-6 to omega-3. So we kind of can balance out the inflammation with the anti-inflammation. However, when we talk about fats, when we talk about the types of fat that you have, if you're talking about eating, say, a grass-fed, grass-finished beef, that fat in there has an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of about three to one. And that's a pretty good ratio because you just, ha you just have three of the inflammatory to one of the anti-inflammatory. If you have a grass-fed grain finished, because remember, anytime you eat grains, just like if you talk to any farmer who has cattle, that's how they fatten cattle up. They give them carbohydrates. So they'll be eating on the grass and then they go to the stockyard and then they feed them all this grain and the grain goes straight into fat, just like it does with humans. So that's why we say to stay away from these carbohydrates and stay away from all these kind of these grains and everything. However, when you eat fat from processed food, when you're talking about like vegetable oils and seed oils, these vegetable and seed oils, because they're not natural and they use a ton of chemicals they use in order to get the oil out of vegetables and seeds, they have to use petrochemicals. They have to use bleaching agents. They have to use deodorizers. They say it stinks so bad when they're making these vegetable and seed oils that the people who work in those factories have to use respirators because it stinks so bad just to keep the smell down. 
But the big thing about so that's one thing. All the chemicals that are on these in these vegetable oils and seed oils, those are things that our body recognizes as should not be in our body. And so it sets up an immune response, an inflammatory response. So anytime you're eating all these chemical laden foods, you're actually causing, you're putting inflammation into your body. But the other thing is when we talk about the ratios, remember it was omega sixes to omega threes to where you have the three to ones with the grass finished. You have like six to one or seven to one with the grain finished. But when you have these vegetable and seed oils, they have at the least 20 to one more omega sixes than it does omega threes. Therefore, that means that you are putting 20 times more inflammatory prostaglandins into our body than we are anti-inflammatory. So that's just one reason why all these vegetable and seed oils are absolutely horrible for your bodies. But the biggest thing with fat, or, or one of the other things with fat, is that fat does not stimulate your insulin release at all. There, when you eat fat, when you eat dietary fat, good healthy dietary fat, not the stuff in this processed food, but God made fat like what you get with a meat, with a good red meat or anything, this kind of fat is so much better for us because it has a great ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. And it also, like I said, stimulates the insulin, not at all. And this is important also when you talk, when I go to the last part where I really want to explain why carbohydrates get stored as fat. But the other thing is cholesterol. Cholesterol is another thing, and I'm not going to go a whole lot in cholesterol, but cholesterol has gotten a horrible name because cholesterol is something. That's why a lot of people are trying to stay away from fat. And I did a whole thing on history of processed food to explain why there's never been a study of cholesterol causing cardiovascular disease. This is something that was put out back in 1977 when we got a new dietary guidelines, which was made from something that happened back in the 1960s about a study with Ansel Keys. But that's a whole nother topic. But I just want you to know, cholesterol is actually extremely good for your body. It's not like what they're telling you, because the cholesterol is used for the construction of every one of our cell walls in our body. It's used for its vital building block for many of our hormones. It's a key part of our immune system and it's essential for tissue repair. We have to have cholesterol. In fact, our body makes all the cholesterol that it needs. And if you eat cholesterol, all that does is your body doesn't have to make as much. But the main thing is you've got to eat the fat. You have to eat the cholesterol to be able to give your body the building blocks it needs to make the type of cholesterol that it needs, depending on what the function is that the cholesterol is going to be doing. Cholesterol is so important that even though our brains are only about 4% of our body weight, our brains use 30% of all the cholesterol in our body. And every single cell in our body can use cholesterol. So if cholesterol is so important to us, why have they told us cholesterol is bad and causes cardiovascular disease? Well, again, that goes back to the history of processed food, which that's in one of my later pod or earlier podcasts. And because there's a drug that all the drug companies are using, all these statins that can lower your cholesterol levels, even though nothing's ever been proven that cholesterol causes any damage in your heart at all. And again, that's a whole nother subject, but we've been lied to basically. And I want you to make sure that you do realize cholesterol is important. It is not this evil thing that we've talked about. And when you do take statins and you do decrease your cholesterol, you're decreasing your body's ability to make the cholesterol that it needs to actual, actually survive. So we've talked about protein has very minimal stimulation on insulin release and fat has zero stimulation on insulin release. Now let's talk about the carbohydrates. The carbohydrates is something that every single, like you said, with the protein, with the fat, when you eat carbohydrates, it breaks it down to the very, very basic building block. And the basic building block of carbohydrates is glucose. So anytime you eat carbohydrates of any source, what you're doing is you're putting glucose into your body. So obviously, if you have diabetes, if you have prediabetes, that is an inefficiency your body cannot handle the glucose load. So what a lot of people tell you is you can eat any carbohydrates you want, just adjust your insulin or adjust your medication around it. I'm saying that is absolutely horrible information. The best thing is saying don't eat carbohydrates at all. Because remember, when you eat carbohydrates and they get turned into glucose and they get put in your body, your body does not want glucose in your bloodstream. It wants very much, very small amount, 80 to 100 mics per mil is, is all they want milligrams per deciliter is what it wants in your blood. 
So as soon as you start, as soon as you put food in your mouth, your body's already getting reused to or getting ready for these carbohydrates. So it starts secreting the insulin right away. And then once you eat it, the carbohydrates, it gets broken down in glucose, shuttled through your bloodstream and goes straight into your bloodstream, causing your blood glucose to go high. And this causes your body to release insulin and your insulin levels go high. So anytime you eat any carbohydrates, you are having a massive insulin release. And this is really what diabetes is. They say we are told that diabetes is a glucose problem. It's our body's inability to handle glucose, but that is not correct. Diabetes is an insulin problem. The whole trick is to try to keep your glucose low and your insulin low. The only way you can do that is to quit putting carbohydrates in your mouth. That's how you're going to keep both of these low. Because if you eat the carbohydrates and then you take your diabetic medicine, almost every single diabetic medicine out there actually causes you to increase your insulin. And that's the problem in the first place is because we have too much insulin and we have insulin resistance. And that's when all the organ damage and everything starts happening with the diabetes. So again, the whole key is trying to keep your insulin levels low and you want to keep your insulin low. And even this drug Ozempic that they're pushing on everybody right now, and that's going to be a whole nother topic later also, but Ozempic, all they tell you is that, that it keeps food in your stomach. It doesn't tell you that it also stimulates your insulin. However, they do tell you that once you start Ozempic, you're going to be on it the rest of your life. Well, that's because it stimulates insulin. So if you don't need the carbohydrates, you don't need the medication and you're keeping your insulin levels low. I hope I got this <laughs> through how important this is. So after you digest your food, okay, after you digest it, so the proteins get turned into amino acids, those go to the liver and the liver puts all those amino acids together to make whatever protein that your body needs at that time. When you eat fat, when it's fat, your fat's in the intestines, that gets that goes across your intestines. Fat doesn't go to the liver. Protein and carbohydrates have to go to the liver to be metabolized. Fat does not. Fat goes actually into your lymphatic system and then that gets put into your bloodstream so it can circulate around and give all the fat and all the cholesterol that you're eating to all the body things that you need. Again, that's for like cell membrane production, hormone production, joint protection. And then also it can be stored as our fasting energy. And that's one thing that, that our body needs to do is store fat. And that's why we have fat cells all over our body. We have subcutaneous fat cells all over our body because God made us to store fat for our energy sources for those times that we're not eating. And I'll explain how that happens. And then the last one, carbohydrates. Remember carbohydrates, those get broken down in glucose. That goes over to the liver. The liver is going to decide first, you know, do you need glucose in your blood? Is your blood glucose low? It'll put it in your blood if you need it. Are you doing any energetic work at the time? Do you need to use that glucose for that energy? And then what it doesn't need, it stores, it takes the glucose and puts together like these little glucose bricks. It's called glycogen and it stores glycogen and it stores it down in your liver. But only 10% of your liver is glycogen. That's all you have for your glycogen energy stores or your glucose energy stores. And then you have 1% of every single skeletal muscle also is glycogen, but it's only used for that one skeletal muscle. And so it's very important that you know that once the glucose isn't used for energy and it's and you fill up your glycogen stores which aren't very much then the rest of that gets turned immediately into fat okay so it gets turned into triglycerides in the liver and then your body carries that around your body and it stores it in fat and this is why and the way it does that is by turning the glucose into fatty acids and into triglycerides and triglycerides is how your body's going to move this around the body take it to the fat cell and then put it inside the cell for your energy source for later. So, and that's the key. That's what I want to explain to you right now, because this is the key to this whole podcast. And when we're talking about storage of fat, okay, think of this as if you've ever moved, if you've ever helped anybody move, like I helped my son move into an apartment one time and we moved from one apartment to another apartment and we went and we carried the, his table is, you know, all his couches and everything. We carried out the door of his old apartment and then we drove all the way down to where we we're going to, he was going to move. And we took the same table and we started to go through the other apartment door. 
and found out that the other apartment he was moving into was older and the door was too small. We couldn't get the table through. So we had to take our tool out in the hallway and take all the legs off of this table, bring the table in the door, and then put all the legs back on the table so we could put it in there or in the kitchen. That is exactly what happens when you're talking about storing fat. That's how we store fat in our subcutaneous fat cells. What happens is picture, remember I told you fat gets carried around the body as triglycerides. And that's why how all these carbohydrates, when you, that's what makes your triglyceride level go up is carbohydrates. All these carbohydrates can turn into fat triglycerides in your body so we can get rid of it. So when you continuously eat carbohydrates, you're continuously turn all these carbohydrates into fat. But the key is the insulin. So just like this, what happens is you've got, there's two enzymes. If you think of triglyceride, picture a big capital E, okay, capital E. So you've got one vertical line and you have three horizontal lines. That's what a triglyceride looks like. Think of that, that one vertical line as glycerol and each of the three horizontal lines on a capital E, that would be your fatty acids. So when you put three fatty acids with glycerol, that's what makes a triglyceride. And this is how we get fat stored into our bodies. The way this works is just like we did with the table, with the coffee table or his dining room table. When these triglycerides float around to your cells and they want to put fat into your cells, there is an enzyme on the outside of the fat cell. And this is called LPL. It's a lipoprotein lipase, LPL. This enzyme cuts those three fatty acids off triglycerides because the whole triglyceride is too big to go across the cell membrane. It can't do it because it's too big, just like the table was too big to get through the door. So there's an enzyme that cuts those fatty acids off the triglyceride. So the three free fatty acids can go across the cell membrane. And then once inside the fat cell, it gets turned back into a triglyceride and it's stored. Okay. That's important. So when you're storing energy, that's the way it goes. When you're burning energy, it's the exact opposite. Now you have an enzyme on the inside of the cell, and this one's called HSL. It's a hormone-sensitive lipase. You have a hormone on the inside of the cell that does the exact same thing. If you need to use fatty acids for your energy source, HSL will cleave those three fatty acids off of that glycerol backbone, let the three fatty acids go to the cell membrane, into the blood and get turned back into triglyceride and then moves, transport around to wherever it's needed, whether it's needed for energy or any of these other things that we say that we use fat for. So that's how it works. You've got an enzyme on the inside of the cell and an enzyme on the outside of the cell. Both of these enzymes do the exact same thing. They cleave those three free fatty acids off the triglyceride so they can go across the cell membrane. The key is insulin. Because insulin, when you have high insulin levels, that stimulates the enzyme on the outside of the cell that causes you to cleave those triglycerides off, those fatty acids off, so that you can store that. So insulin stimulates that enzyme, the LPL enzyme, but it also inhibits HSL on the other side. So when your insulin levels are high, you are causing your body to store fat. And it cannot burn it because high insulin levels inhibit the HSL, the enzyme on the inside of the fat cells. So the exact thing opposite works. When your insulin levels come down low, now you're stimulating the HSL, the enzyme on the inside of the cell, and you're inhibiting LPL, the enzyme on the outside of the cell. So what this means is now your insulin levels are low, and now you start tearing up the triglycerides on the inside of the fat cell, moving the free fatty acids across the membrane, putting it back into triglycerides and moving around to wherever it's needed. So the whole thing depends on, are your insulin levels high or your insulin levels low? And this is why it's important because when, just like we said, when you eat carbohydrates, you keep your insulin levels low. And most people eat carbohydrates at least every two to three hours. They're constantly eating carbohydrates, these pro especially the horrible carbohydrates in this processed food. So anything in a box, bottle, bag, can, any of that stuff, when you eat that, you keep your insulin levels low, you're putting massive amounts of glucose into your body so it has to get switched over to fat. So when you eat carbohydrates, you're producing way more triglycerides than you would ever need 
and you stimulate insulin release. So what that means is that you are constantly stimulating your LPL enzyme to store fat. And when you eat this way and you keep your insulin levels high, it's inhibiting HSL so you cannot burn it. So this is why people who go and they run all the time and they think, oh, look at all this energy I'm burning. I should be losing weight. But they notice that they're not. They're actually gaining weight. And again, it's because you do not lose weight by exercising. Exercising is fantastic. It's wonderful. So many things. But losing weight is way down the list of why exercising is good. Because you will not be able to lose weight if you keep your insulin levels high. And that's what you do when you eat carbohydrates. So I want you to remember that. And also when we talk about this, and I hope that made sense to you. That's why you want to keep your insulin levels low because you want to actually burn your fat and the body will not burn fat and carbohydrates at the same time. It's either one or the other. So a normal person, if you're, well, or, you know, if you're start eating like the way I would like for people to start eating where you only eat one, maybe two meals a day. And when you eat those meals, it is real meat hopefully grass-fed, grass-finished, but it could be grass-fed, grain-finished. But when you eat real meat and real fat, it keeps you satiated for longer periods of time. So you can go many hours to days without eating if you just eat one good, healthy meat and fat meal. And But however, when you eat carbohydrates, carbohydrates do not keep you satiated. They're going to make you hungry. So you eat more and more and more. So you are actually setting yourself up as a time bomb because you eat carbohydrates. They, oh, and that's the other thing. Remember we talked about the protein has nine essential amino acids that you, your body doesn't make. You have to get it from the outside. It has two essential fatty acids that your body doesn't make. You have to get them from the outside. That's your omega-3 and omega-6. Carbohydrates, there is no such thing as the essential carbohydrate. Your body can make all the glucose it needs. And it's called gluconeogenesis, meaning you make glucose out of a non-carbohydrate source. So protein can get turned into glucose if it's needed, and fat can get turned into glucose if it's needed. So there is no reason you should ever have to eat carbohydrates. Although, since our dietary guidelines came out in 1977, which were totally based off totally, totally false, inaccurate information that said that eating dietary fats is what makes you fat, now we know. Because that was back in 1977, and we have years of studies, and we know that since the new dietary guidelines came out, our obesity rates in both adults and children have skyrocketed. Our type 2 diabetes rates in both adults and children have skyrocketed. And remember, type 2 diabetes in children, that used to be unheard of until our new dietary guidelines came out. Because, And that's why type 2 diabetes used to be called non-insulin dependent diabetes. Because we never used to treat type 2 diabetes with insulin before. We, all, we did it with nutrition because nutrition is what gave you the diabetes. Nutrition is what's going to cure you and get you away from diabetes. So this is important to know. So anyway, when you eat food, I want you to think about what type of food that you're eating. Does it stimulate your insulin release or not? And remember, if it's carbohydrate, it does. And there's also other things because like processed carbohydrates, the things that you're getting in these box bottles, bags and cans, these are full of flour, which is powdered glucose, wheat, which is carb, corn, which is carb, soy, which is carb, sugar, which is carb, high fructose corn syrup, which is carb. And all of these make you continuously hungry for more. So you keep eating more and more. And the food companies know this because they want you hungry. So you buy their food. OK, but this stuff is what's killing us. What you want to do, if you want to eat a carbohydrate, please stick to the natural carbohydrates, the fruits and the vegetables. Those are the natural ones because that's kind of there's an insulin index, just like there's a glycemic index. They came up with a better index called the insulin index, even though we don't do this in the United States or very rarely. And the insulin index, when they came up with the insulin index, when they would feed people different types of food, and then they would measure their insulin release after they eat this food. And what they found is that when people eat processed carbohydrates, these the ones that with the flour, wheat, corn, soy, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, all the horrible stuff, besides all the chemicals they put in this man-made food, this stimulates your insulin way more than anything else. The next one down that stimulated pretty high, but not as much, would be your natural carbohydrates, like your fruits and vegetables. And the reason they don't stimulate quite as much is because you also get a lot of fiber and you don't eat anywhere near the amount. If you're going to eat an orange, 
you're not going to sit there and eat eight oranges over and over. However, if you drink orange juice, you will begin the equivalent of eight oranges or more, depending on what you do. That's why I've always say stay far away from all fruit juices. Every single fruit juice, stay away from it. It is toxic to your body. If you want the fruit, eat the fruit, stay away from the juice. So anyway, so processed carbs stimulated insulin the most. The natural carbs like fruits and vegetables were next. Then when you had protein mixed with the carbohydrates, that was even less than that. When you, So like if you eat, say, lettuce or asparagus or something, a salad with a good piece of meat. If you, When you eat all that stuff together, that has less of an effect on your insulin. And then there's protein. Protein has just a minimal amount of insulin release. And again, fat doesn't do anything at all. Like I said at the beginning, I think the way God made this is like we said, we need fat to be able to go into our storage cells so we can use that for times when we're not eating, okay, our fasting energy. If all you ate was fat and fat doesn't stimulate insulin, if you remember what I just said, insulin is going to be low. So that means that you will not be stimulating your LPL to store that fat. But since protein stimulates insulin a little bit, when you eat meat, like a good steak, the protein of the steak will it raise the insulin levels just a little bit, just enough that you this fat that's floating around in your bloodstream, if it's not being used for one of all these multiple vital things that fat and cholesterol is used for in our bodies. But now with a little bit of insulin stimulation for the protein, that allows us to store the fat as our energy source. So that's why I think protein has a little bit. But again, nowhere near carbohydrates. So again, Carbohydrates are horrible for you. <laughs> Stay away from them. There's nothing good about them. And if you do want carbohydrates, please stick to fruits and vegetables if you're going to have them at all. And stay away from the other ones. If you want to lose fat, the key is keep your insulin levels low. That means very minimal, if any carbohydrates at all, you want to keep those out of your system. So that's kind of the key. Keeping your insulin levels low, whenever you eat food, think about, is this going to raise my insulin or is it going to decrease it? Because that has everything to do with whether you're going to burn fat or whether you're going to store it. So I hope this made sense to you. And I hope now you understand when I talk later about how high insulin levels cause you to get fatter, low insulin levels allows you to burn that fat and use that for your energy source, which is ketones are a much better energy source than carbohydrates anyway, or the glucose. And ketones is what the fatty acids get broken down to and our body can use that for energy. And again, if this doesn't explain it to you or sway you to understand how this works, remember the storage sides. We have tiny, tiny little 10% of our liver for the glycogen storage, and we have subcutaneous fat cells all over our body for energy sources. That's because the carbohydrates, our glycogen should be used for only for our fight or flight energy. So it can be used really quick and then you can replenish it. And our subcutaneous fat cells are what we're supposed to use for energy all the rest of the time. And if you eat healthy with real meat, with real animal fat, real fruits and vegetables, your body will have the nutrients that it needs. You won't be hungry and you'll be able to stay a lot healthier through all the toxins that are surrounding us in our environment. And remember, there's a lot of toxins in our environment that we can't do anything about. It's just that's what we do unless you move somewhere else. However, you have 100% control over the toxins that you put in your mouth and you eat. So please think about that. If you truly would like to get healthy, quit having all these inflammatory diseases, all these itises, rheumatoid arthritis and everything else. There are so many inflammatory issues now that we never used to see before our new dietary guidelines coming out saying that we should be eating carbs and not fat. Worst guidelines ever. The food pyramid should be totally turned upside down. It's totally incorrect. And that first line should be totally wiped out where it says you should be eating your flour and grains and carbs. That, that is not true. That whole line of the pyramid needs to be removed. So anyway, I'm not going to be a dead, her, dead horse. I just wanted to let you know that that's why you want to try to keep both your glucose levels low and your insulin levels low. And you're going to do that by using fat for energy source and not carbohydrates and preferably no carbohydrates in your diet at all. So that's all I got for today. So thank you so much for listening and have a great week. And remember, make simple, healthy choices to live a quality life. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hit the subscribe button below and be sure to tell someone else who may want to change their health path as well. 
And don't forget, you can also purchase my book, Your Plate is Your Faith, on Amazon or Audible. And if you do, please leave a review. 